Hello and welcome to Ordeal Workshop. In this video I will show a method I discovered for frosting, flaking or more pattern scraping that is unbelievably easy. This is how it came about. I wanted to learn hand scraping for flatness for an upcoming project so I watched some videos on YouTube mainly by Stefan Gotteswinter. This is my practice piece, it is a scrap iron casting with voids. This is a bit like how it should look when scraped for flatness. But I've always been interested in how the ornamental scraping like you find on old machines, like this Viceroy lathe, is done. It consists of a pattern of crescents or half moon shapes scraped into the surface. It helps with oil retention and is decorative. I think that now I've been hand scraping for nearly a week, for an hour each evening, I'm ready to tackle the black art of ornamental scraping. So I watched some videos on how this should be done and will now demonstrate these techniques. Firstly, I ignored all advice to buy an expensive carbide tip scraper and bought cheap steel ones from eBay, these are possibly made in India. Two small ones and this large one. They come with a straight unfinished end to which you grind a radius and rake angle to suit your application. If you clicked on this video you probably have your own method for doing this. Larger ones are preferred for normal scraping as you can get your weight behind it more easily. This is a faithful branded 8 inch scraper, it's 3 quarters of an inch wide, that's about 200 millimeters by 19. So far I've been most comfortable with this size of tool. I've ground a 60 millimeter radius on it, metric due to watching Stefan's channel, with as he suggested for cast iron a negative 5 degree rake. Let's begin, method 1, most common. The idea as I understand it is that you hold the scraper slightly biased to one side of the radius with the hand on the handle and push the scraper forward into the surface also with this hand. At the same instant with the other hand you push down fleetingly on one edge of the scraper, this action should be like an impulse causing the scraper to roll sideways on the radius and then return before the scraper stops, thus cutting uniform crescent marks. I did one! Look! There! I've done one! Hmm. OK, I'll try the other hand. And give up. I've tried this many times and this is about as good as I've got. Method 2. Bump scraping. Again biasing the scraper to one side with the handle hand, but this time the other hand is bumping the scraper forward and trying to twist it at the same time. This is the first time I've tried this apart from take one. Not even sure how this is supposed to work. No. Method 3. A guy called Don was demonstrating this on a YouTube video. You hold the chisel upright then bump it towards yourself with the other hand, hitting the scraper on one side. It scrapes the metal with the face of the scraper rather than the end. I have got this to work. It's sort of doing it, but it hurts a lot after time. So I thought I would use a mallet instead of my hand. It makes strange marks though, they are often jagged from the shock impact. So I tried to reduce the impact, once I taped a rubber pad to the scraper with some success but found the rubber mallet was better for reducing shock.
but the scraper over rotates and the shapes are still wrong. Don't give up yet, the magic's coming. I tried a smaller 4 inch scraper that's 9 sixteenths wide, 100 millimeters by 14 and a half millimeters. It has a 40 millimeter radius and the same negative 5 degree rake. It's difficult to aim, so I've put a mark on it to help position it. Not that one. Okay, there. I'm pressing the chisel down a little more than just resting my arm on it. If you hold the scraper at a steeper angle, you get rounder marks. At a shallower angle, you get more pointy marks. If you hit it harder, they are larger, although you do have to hit it harder at a shallower angle to get it to move. It really is as easy as it looks. I only discovered this the other day and it worked straight away. It's not particularly sensitive to variations in techniques, so it takes virtually no practice. Try it. There must be some relationship between the size, width and radius of the scraper and the weight of the mallet. When this is found, it works by itself. But here's the rub. It's really hard to get the marks into an attractive pattern. Here's where you will need some practice. One pattern I've seen is lines of crescents. The tails from the second line should go to the middle of the crescents from the first line and so on. I believe that more pattern scraping is like this but the crescents are more rounded. Here the gaps between the rows are then filled with crescents in a different orientation. See how they catch the light differently. It doesn't blunt the scraper and I've found this works best if the scraper isn't extremely keen. I shall prepare my practice scrap and try another pattern I've seen. This will consist of two sets of lines of crescents at different angles. I've marked this with lines about 5 sixteenths or 8 millimetres apart, but I think this is slightly wide. As you can see, it's really hard to follow the lines. If you see me straining, it's not forcing the chisel down, it's fighting to keep it in a straight line. Now I cover it in layout blue, as it's hard to see the new marks for the old ones. Mark it with lines the other way around to make a diamond grid, and turn the workpiece around. The new marks want to be orientated at about 90 degrees to the first ones. With the blue it's easy to see what you're doing.
Okay, I'd be fired for this if I'd just done this to a new machine. But considering I started like this, it's a definite improvement. There you have it, frosting with a £6 eBay scraper and a £1 market store rubber mallet. Thanks for watching, goodbye.